Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fin Cal. Today, let's talk about an interesting question I've received from Balaji. He wants to know how much loss uh, should uh, one expect uh, while investing in equity or in equity mutual funds? That's a very interesting question because most people ask the other question. They want to know how much returns to expect. Now, uh, uh, Balaji is aware that uh, we have already discussed several times before that one cannot expect any returns from uh, equity mutual funds because if you look at the rolling returns either lump sum or SIP or, or in the past the returns fluctuate quite a bit so you can't simply sit down sit and say I, I, I am expecting 12% return 15% return 10% returns and so on that just doesn't work you need to actively manage your portfolio so he wants to know how much loss one should expect now, I don't want to get into all the details I have discussed uh, in the article. I have um, shown a several set of numbers, but I just want to uh, explain to you what I have done. So, uh, so if you want to uh, uh, set a number for the loss, now loss in equity has got two components. One is loss in value. Now there can be a huge crash. And uh, some people arbitrarily say that you can lose 40% or 50% of your uh, value when, when the crash occurs. And then there is a loss in time. That is, uh, there may be a few years of no returns at all uh, from equity. So uh, we have to look at this uh, question in two angles. And the first thing is that we must always look at risk as well as return at the portfolio level. We should not be looking at uh, it. Uh, this I am holding three funds. A fund has given me this much return. B fund has given me that much return and so on. Okay, that's all fine. Uh, but above that, uh, before all that, you should be having a proper asset allocation and how much is the portfolio giving you overall and how much is the risk in the portfolio. If you don't know how to measure it, you don't know how to measure diversification in the first place. So all these questions of risk and reward should be with respect to the portfolio level. It should be at the portfolio level. So uh, we should be tracking the growth of our portfolio. You can uh, you can recall that in my audits, I talk about how the uh, how my portfolio has grown. So we must be looking at how much the, uh, the uh, we must be tracking the portfolio growth and we must be able to calculate the drawdown. And we uh, that is drawdown means uh, suppose the portfolio hit a uh, all-time high of let's say 25 lakhs you have never seen 25 lakhs in your life before that's the highest from there there is a downturn from 25 lakhs it falls down to uh, 20 lakhs or 15 lakhs so that's the fall how much percentage has it fallen down and then it recovers up that's one aspect of loss the other aspect of loss is suppose it starts dipping from 25 lakhs uh, but it doesn't drop too much it doesn't f crash too much but it just falls to 20 lakhs it stays at 21 lakhs, 19 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 22 lakhs. And it takes, let's say, another three years to cross that previous high of 25 lakhs. So now you are, this is a loss in time. There is not too much of a loss in value, but there is a loss in time. So there are two components to loss in the capital markets. One is the loss in value and the other is loss in time. You have lost, uh, uh, you know, three years, four years uh, without any uh, gains. I, I have said many times before that uh, in my case uh, I was without uh, uh, any kind of returns for the first uh, five years uh, of equity investing that is also a risk of course that was my first uh, five years my goals were very very far away at that point in time so I could afford to uh, take that risk that's a different matter but as a matter of expectation we should s separate two things in loss one is loss in value and the other is the uh, uh, the loss in time. So the loss in value, you, I did a back test using uh, both the Nifty 500 and uh, I have used either gilts for the uh, debt component or I've just used a simple imaginary fixed income or uh, giving 6% return a year. Um, and uh, I have calculated the maximum drawdown. That is the, what was the, I have looked at every possible 15 year periods in the past and what is the maximum loss that one could uh, uh, one has seen in the past uh, for a 50-50 asset allocation, 50% equity, 50% um, 
fixed income or 70% equity and 30% fixed income. So the, uh, all the details are here, all the numbers are here, but it's, and you can see all the numbers are here. It's extremely painful for me to, to, to know to mention all this uh, uh, you know, one by one, it can be tiresome for you to listen as well. So I'll just tell you the uh, gist of it. But I would, uh, if you want to look at the data, the data is available in the article, it's in the community page. So for the gist of it is, for an investor aiming to hold 50 to 70% equity in the portfolio, they must expect the portfolio, not the equity component. The overall portfolio will decrease in value by 35 to 40%. At least they must expect minimum. And the portfolio losses can persist for two to three years. At least two to three years without any extra return, without that is the portfolio will be underwater. It will be below the maximum. Uh, that much expectation you should have. Of course, these are all based on past data, uh, new data, uh, future can be more can be uh, more devastating than it has been in the past. But this is the minimum expectation of loss that you should have. 35, 45, 35 to 45% loss in the portfolio value at any point in time and the portfolio itself uh, in red for two to three years. This is at the portfolio level. Uh, what happens at the equity level that is if i look at only the equity portfolio and what happens for different combinations for asset allocation and so on i will talk, discuss this in a uh, separate study bye bye